Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I talk about how to heal chronic fatigue, adrenal fatigue, and other chronic illnesses by healing old attachment trauma, specifically neglect trauma, because that's the type of trauma that, in my opinion, from experience, is the type of trauma that shows up in the physical body as fatigue and pain, physical symptoms. Today, I want to talk about disgust. And my name's Lauren, by the way, if you're new to me. If you're new to me, welcome. I want to talk about disgust because it is a really, really important emotion that is not talked about. It's probably talked about the least of any of the emotions, at least for, as far as I can see. And it's a core emotion. It is a primal emotion that we all feel that's normal in the process of healing trauma. Disgust is going to come up because in order to form trauma, there had to be enough emotional disconnect for us to disconnect from ourselves. And a lot of times it's a disconnection from anger. It's a disconnection from grief. A lot of times there are boundary issues. There are lines that are crossed, whether it's abuse or neglect or any kind of boundary crossing or shaming, anything like that can naturally create disgust. But disgust is an energy that we have likely have a lot of shame and rejection of like, I'm not allowed to feel that. I'm not allowed to feel that towards someone I love. I'm not allowed to feel that towards one of my caregivers, the people that are taking care of me, keeping me alive, <laughs> that are giving me all my physical needs. And they're supposed to be the ones giving me my emotional needs when I'm a child. So disgust can be really embedded in a lot of the traumas that we're experiencing. Now, especially if you know that you've got solar plexus stuff, Solar plexus impacts, impacts on drive, on ability to take action, on career, on the ability to set boundaries, the ability to be angry, the ability to express anger. All of these things are solar plexus. It could also be physical. It could be nausea. It could be low stomach acid. It could be high stomach acid. It could be slow liver. So any of these things that come in the solar plexus that you're working with, so the organs of stomach and liver and the kidneys are the big ones, maybe pancreas, but I have not looked into that, but that would be related to sh blood sugar issues, but I have not thought deep enough. So take that one with a grain of salt, but definitely liver, kidneys, and stomach. So that's your solar plexus. If you know that you've got solar plexus stuff going on in your body, disgust might be playing a significant role. And because disgust is one that's not really in our awareness, it sure wasn't in mine for a long time. And you know what I found? <laughs> is that it was a major energy inhibiting my ability to process some anger. Anger's been a journey for me. <laughs> it was the most suppressed energy in my body, by far the most suppressed. And it has embedded in it, for me, a lot of disgust. I am not allowed to express anger and the disgust is something that protects me from it because I have disgust about it, disgust at my own anger. You know, it, it was fairly recent. I mean, it was, it was within the last year that I realized I have disgust at me creating boundaries. That, that energy, I realized in a therapy session, I noticed my lips curling. Disgust was coming up and it explained so much. <laughs> It explained why I've, ha I've had so much trouble because I've been focusing on the anger element and that's part of it. So then anxiety and adrenal issues are really a lot of energy about fear of our own anger. But when we have fear of our own anger, look for disgust. Ask yourself, is it possible that disgust is present here? And like I said, noticing a curling up, a scrunching of the face, a, a disgusted look or nausea when you're talking about it or you're thinking about setting a boundary, noticing any of those things, but usually it's talking because it's like that using that throat chakra, activating the throat chakra with it. And really it'll only show up when it's ready. But one of the most important things that I've learned from working with disgust, and I've been building a relationship with it for the past probably say, yeah, seven months. And it first came through after a mediumship session that I had, the only one I've ever had. And it was about sexual trauma that had not happened to me, but it was basically implied that I was carrying that in my body, even though it had not happened directly to me. That enabled me to permit myself to access disgust because with sexual trauma, there's a lot of disgust. There's a lot of disgust. 
I mean, that is a very, very prominent energy along with rage. So that sort of gave me permission to access disgust beforehand. I guess I had been unconsciously not allowing myself to have disgust, feel disgust. But one of the most important lessons that I've learned in building a relationship with disgust is that it is a huge reason that anger gets stuck. That is so important because if you're working with chronic fatigue or chronic pain, disgust is going to be really important to investigate and see, is there some here? There probably is. There probably is. And it's normal. It's normal and it's natural. And all of us have it. But, but what I've also noticed is building a relationship with it this year is it shows up in everyday life, in, in interactions with other people in life. <laughs> it happens. And that doesn't mean you're going to go around spouting disgusted people. No way. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean at all. But to recognize it in yourself, like, you know, I think this is a common thing, especially for empaths and internalizers, is you have interactions with people and then you, you come away from it and there's something that kind of lingers with you. And as you're kind of picking apart, what is that? Like, what, what's, what's here? What, it, what, is, what is it that I'm feeling from that interaction? Why is it still, why is it bothering me? What, like, why do I feel icky? Yeah, icky's a good clue. Could it be disgust? if ickiness is there. And so whenever boundaries are crossed, whenever something shaming was said, anytime there's like a penetrating energy that that is hurtful, harmful, like disgust is a possibility. So I want to share today how to express it somatically in my experience. But I want to reiterate this point, though, that disgust is a primary energy that blocks anger. I have had to relearn this this week. Disgust has been coming up. It seems like a lot of people are working with disgust, but didn't know that they were working with disgust because it's not really talked about as a primary emotion, which it is. So I had to relearn this this week. That's something that I've been angry, it just like irritability just like sort of comes up again and again and again in this one spot, in this one relationship or in this one dynamic. And it's like, I'm acknowledging the anger. I'm, I'm trying to express it like I'm talking about it. It's not, and it just keeps coming up and it's the same thing over and over and over again. It's not really moving and I don't feel like rage. It's just like this chronic sort of anger and irritability. What I finally had to relearn is that it's disgust. The anger is not moving because disgust is in the way. The way I've been picturing it this week and describing it is if anger is a wheel that's trying to turn, disgust is the stick that goes through the spokes. So the wheel can't turn. So the wheel's trying to turn, the anger wheel, it's trying to turn. And, you know, you're on this journey trying to work with all your emotions, but it just won't turn. And it, why isn't it moving? I'm like, I'm doing everything I know how to do with the anger and it's just not moving. It's the disgust. It's the stick in the spokes. So that is like so important. It's been extremely important in my own healing journey. And I think it's important for a lot of other people, too. Because when we're working with trauma, like I said in the beginning, disgust is going to be there. It's going to be there because we've experienced a lot of pain, disappointment, and crossed boundaries in some way. Okay, so how do we work with disgust? So anytime anger is not moving, when I notice something that I've been angry about and I keep being angry and it's just not moving, could there be disgust there? And whether it's a quick, oh my God, yes, or... I don't know, maybe, you know, it could be either way, it can show up either way or another way. But if it's possible that it is, then the question is, how do we work with disgust, right? So how we work with it is to acknowledge it and then to remember this is allowed to be here because this is a part of every single human being experience. This is a part of the human experience. Our emotions are our most precious, innate resource. They're here for our survival. Disgust is indicating something that's not safe. And you know that because if you think about our disgust response to a food that's gone bad, like something that smells, you can smell the bacteria growth, or it's slimy, or it's got mold on it, or it's rotting. Those are things that are supposed to evoke disgust. Why? because they're unsafe to eat. They'll make us sick or worse. So the disgust response is meant to keep us safe. It's meant to keep us away from 
the dangerous thing. So disgust is our friend. That's an important thing to remember when we notice that disgust might be present because shame might be there with it because that's the thing that's kept us from feeling the disgust, the self-judgment, the, the blaming of the self and shame that this, it's me that this is a problem. So shame can, can be viewed as self-disgust. So we, will, we need to externalize it, that there's something in the relational dynamic that has created the disgust response and it's trying to keep us safe. That is a normal emotion to keep us safe. So there's something about that relational dynamic that, that is causing you to feel unsafe. So we framed it, we've conceptualized it, we've, we've comforted ourselves, we've validated ourselves that we're allowed to have this. This is a normal and natural response to something that is being felt as unsafe, emotionally unsafe or physically unsafe, but probably emotionally unsafe. So now what do we do? We've acknowledged that, we've framed it, we've comforted, we've come to the self, we've connected with the self invalidated ourselves. Now we get to do the somatic embodiment of disgust. So one I've already kind of talked about, which is the curling of the lip. So, so when you recognize it, you acknowledge it, you validate it, and then we can start to make the face. Let yourself make the face. Think about the thing. Think about the dynamic. Let yourself make the face. The scrunching of the nose, the curling of the lips, and then add the word. It helps. It's in, in the, it pulls up on the, in the cheeks and the eyes. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. That disgusts me. That disgusts me. Let yourself get more into it. Really focus on it. It's disgusting. And it, it's probably going to start feeling good and, and like that cathartic good. It, it feels really cathartic to start doing this, but just notice any shame or judgment that comes up and just let it be there and remember that this is normal, natural, and just try to open up the energy for it to allow it. And I'm noticing I'm like rocking. So that's another way to sort of like self-soothe this kind of rock. You can also do havening, but it's disgusting. The relationship, the dynamic in your mind's eye and say that it's, dis it's disgusting, that disgusts me. You disgust me. Let yourself say it. It's an emotional wave. It's not a judgment of the person. You are having an emotional wave. So these are things to to like to to calm the the shame and the the, the questioning and the the noise. So let yourself do that and say it, and say it and say it as many times. I mean, when I have releases like this, I just say it over and over and over and over and over again until it feels like I don't need to say it anymore. The other thing to add in, and this makes it more potent and more embodied. So you want to want to pull, pull your head away and put your hands up like, like you're, you're blocking, you're blocking yourself from that energy. So you're pushing it away and you're looking away and it's like, this, that is disgusting, 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 pulling the head away, pulling it away and down and looking away and down or closing your eyes. Like I cannot see that. Like, oh, disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. And it feels really good to do. The other thing that you might notice is you feel these, the skin crawling, skin crawling and these like chills. In the medium session, the person who told me about this was said that it was, it's gonna feel like a bucket of cold water is poured over your head. And I thought that's a pretty good description. It's like, it's cold. Disgust is cold. That's a really interesting thing to think about. I was thinking about that the other day. Disgust is cold and anger is hot. And you've got both in your solar plexus. It's not interesting to have cold and hot both in your solar plexus. And like I have had a perpetual cold problem. And I've always thought, well, it's just, it's frozen. It's I'm literally frozen. Yeah, that is. But it, what is it? It's disgust. It's unprocessed disgust. It has been hit me cold all the time. This took me years, years. I mean, what if that's the cold? I mean, I don't know for sure. But what if that is the cold, the disgust, because disgust is cold and anger is hot. And I've been trying to move the anger, trying to get the heat through my body. But the disgust is just like pouring cold water on the fire. So I can't, I can't fan the flames. I'm having cold water dumped. So sorry, that was a little tangent. But it feels like you get these cold chills and you want to shudder. Oh, like it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Oh, oh. And like pulling away and you want to wipe 
You want to wipe. Your skin is like crawling. It's disgusting. You want to wipe it off. I have made myself so sore because of the, the vigorousness and how long I needed to just wipe and pull this energy off of my body. Like it's just, it's disgusting, disgusting. And just saying it the whole time. Anytime you're having an, a somatic release, you want to keep listening to what does my body want to do right now? Does it want to keep doing this? A lot of times it'll want to keep doing something over and over and over again for a while. But sometimes it'll want to change. Sometimes it'll take you into something immediately. Sometimes you'll feel complete there and then you'll, you'll sit and just be still. And then if you feel so like nausea, one thing you might want to do is get on your all fours and start sort of retching, you know, making the sound and like really making it. This one brings me to tears. All of this kind of does. The tears are like right there the whole time and they, they might start streaming and you might kind of fluctuate between crying and disgust and anger and just like listen to the waves. Let the waves come. Disgust once you recognize it and you work with the shame and you've learned how to validate the shame and the self-judgment, let it be there, understand it, have empathy for it, but also know that that's a defense and that this is normal. And once you work with that, disgust can be fairly accessible, actually, potentially. So if you can let yourself do these things, let yourself dry heave and let your body sort of have these convulsions and just keep focusing and listening, focusing on the thing that has brought the disgust. It might be some way that somebody talks to you, the things that they've said, the way they treat you. It's like, just let yourself feel the disgust of that. You can have incredible releases this way and it can bring you to the anger and it can bring you to the tears. It can move that cold energy. It can bring heat. It can bring cold. Just listen to the waves that are happening. And that's the key with any emotional release. But disgust, I have found disgust to be fascinating. And maybe just because it's foreign, you know, we're all sort of familiar with crying. Even if it's hard for us to cry, we're familiar with it. We know it's normal and it's good and it's cathartic and all that. The other ones are a little more foreign, but we've heard about screaming and rage rooms and stuff, hitting pillows and running to get that energy out. Disgust is a little more foreign. It sure was for me. I don't know about you. So I've just found it to be a really fascinating experience. And it's one that I was completely, completely dissociated from. Completely. And as a result, it was kind of the last difficult emotion. Well, as far as I know. That's still on this. But it felt like the last difficult emotion to build a loving relationship with. And I, I actually really do love disgust now. I'm so grateful for it. And I have more. I mean, as I've alluded to, I've found more this week. And so now I just have to create the space to really let it move through me. Again, it's like that visualization of a cold water bucket constantly being poured on the flame in your gut. Like, oh my gosh, this is just a rhetorical question, but how many gut issues have to do with disgust that hasn't been processed? Because we don't know how to process it, because we don't know that it's normal and it's natural and because there's so much shame around it and, and suppression. So it, it's an important one. I've been wanting to make this video because it's so important, but for a long time, there was a piece that I felt like I was missing and it felt like I needed that before making it. And it was the piece that I shared a few minutes ago of the safety that it's indicating an unsafe relationship. It's indicating when you're feeling unsafe. That is huge. It's huge because the emotion that most of us relate to unsafety is fear. And that's true. But what about disgust? How much fear in our body is being created by disgust? How much fear is the fear of disgust, of letting ourselves feel disgust? A lot of the fear is fear of our own anger. But what if before that, there's fear of disgust? Isn't that interesting? I think it's so interesting. I would be so curious to hear what your experience is. And if you try this, and if this resonates, if it hits, I really believe disgust is a big one. And it's one that prevents the anger from moving. And anger not moving is the cause of so much physical and mental misery. It's a cause of depression. It's a cause of chronic fatigue. One of, along with grief. But what about disgust? 
What about disgust? How much disgust is playing a role? I hope you are curious about this in your own body and see if you think it might be true for you. And if you experiment with it and see how your body reacts, and you might find other ways that your body wants to somatically release and embody disgust. And I would just like, I would love to hear. So that's my invitation for you. Never have to do anything, but my invitation. And I hope you're doing well. I hope your healing journey is feeling grounded and productive. It always feels long. It always feels hard, but you're doing it. You are doing it. And you are giving the greatest gift to yourself, your loved ones, the planet, the world by doing this work and sticking with it. I admire every single person on this journey. It takes so much courage to do it. And I admire you so much. And I'm with you on it. If you ever want my personal support, one-on-one -on -one support, I'm always here. You can contact me through my website, laurenvorhees.com. You can book a session there, a free 30-minute consultation slash discovery call, and then paid sessions after that. You can find that on my website. I would love to support you. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.